Today, we're going to automate network men in the middle attacks with zero exploit on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. A man in the middle attack is when an attacker gets on a network and forces all nearby devices to connect to their machine directly, basically enabling them to spy on traffic and even modify certain things. Now we've taken a look at this with tools like BetterCap, but today we're going to take a look at Zerosploit, which aims to automate a lot of high-level functions that normally take more configuration work in BetterCap. Now, in order to install this, you can check out the Nullbyte link in the description, and also you'll need a Linux system in order to run this. So while I haven't tried this on a Mac OS system, I can guarantee it does work on Ubuntu and Kali Linux. If you get confused, again, make sure to check out the link in the description because we'll be able to walk you through any steps that you might have missed. Now, Zerosploit is also a little bit hit and miss, so I need to set your expectations on this one. You might find that certain web pages simply can't be spoofed because they use HTTPS or because your target is using a VPN. So there is a big carve out here when I say that you're able to manipulate traffic because good HTTPS websites and also anyone using a VPN will be immune to this. So with that little part of that explained, let's get started. All right, today we're gonna to take a look at Zerosploit. And Zerosploit is a really interesting tool that advertises itself as an efficient and advanced man in the middle framework. Now, basically what Zerosploit does is it rides on top of a couple other tools and automates them to the extent that these higher level concepts uh, are able to be accomplished in a couple of commands. Now, it also has a really nice installation. So if you just run the git clone here, and then cd zero exploit and sudo python install.py, the Python program goes ahead and installs everything, which is really handy. After that, you're able to just sudo zero exploit. And just to show you what this looks like, although I've already installed it, I'll go ahead and go to a terminal window. And first I'll show you, this is what zero exploit actually looks like. So it has everything from a port scanner, a denial of service attack, which is just basically DNS poisoning, ping request, injecting HTML and JavaScript, replacing files when people are downloading stuff, sniffing, spooping, uh, playing YouTube noises in the background as an obnoxious way of bothering people, replacing images, driftnet to see images people are looking at, um, moving or shaking the browser, which is funny, and uh, defacing something by overwriting the web page. Now, I will also note that this one doesn't seem to work currently, or I wasn't able to get it to work, but I tried out many of these other modules and I was able to get them to work, including the uh, DNS spoofing, which we already have a guide on doing with BetterCap. All right, so let's go ahead and open a new terminal window. I'm going to go to CD zero exploit, and assuming that I've now git cloned it, I can see there are a number of different things here, including the install.py. We would run uh, sudo python install, dot pi. I'm going to remove this part of the command. And also I don't need to sudo it because I'm already root. And it'll automatically ask you uh, what operating system you're running. I'm using Kali Linux. I'll select one. And yeah, it just goes ahead and just downloads and installs everything. It's awesome. So one of the reasons I like this tool is just how easy it is to install. I already have everything. So there we go. We're, we're done. And now I can just type zero exploit in my terminal and I'm able to get this up and running. So if you want to check out more of the stuff that this tool can do, you can check out the GitHub here, which has some good uh, just explanations of, of what this is. So yeah, this is awesome. There's some, uh, there's a demonstration, but there's not a ton of uh, documentation. So let's go through today and see how this works. All right, so I'm going to, actually, I'm going to end the zero sprite session I'm in now, and we'll start this all from scratch. So control C, we'll shut it down. Control L, and let's start this from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and make the text a little bit bigger. All right, so first, I'm going to type zero exploit. OK, so whoa. So we're met with this little splash screen. We got some ASCII art, and then it has our IP address, our MAC address, our gateway, and all this fun stuff. OK, cool, interesting. So the first thing we can do is just uh, type help to find out what is going to be our next step. We can either manually set the interface if we have a variety of different gateways. For example, if we are on both Wi-Fi and Ethernet, we can select which one we want to use manually here. We can set our gateway. So if there's multiple like routers or multiple different uh, maybe extenders on the network, you can change which one's your gateway. We can scan the entire network and we can also do a lot of other stuff related to uh, scanning or, or otherwise looking at logs. 
So in this case, we're going to go ahead and scan. And this should scan the network. And this is writing on top of Nmap. And now we have a result for the computer we want to target, which is this Compal Informations Kushan, uh, whatever that is, computer. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take this IP address. This is the one we're going to target. And as soon as we enter that IP address, we are now in the section that will allow us to run modules. So we'll type help. We can see there's lots of different modules here. And we're basically back where I was a couple seconds ago. And uh, now we can decide which one of these we want to do. So we have an Ubuntu computer that's connected here. And we're going to run a couple of these modules and just see what they look like. So the first one, and probably the most simple to do, is just the move command, which is going to verify that we do, in fact, have access to this computer, uh, or at least we're able to manipulate their connection. Uh, so we're going to type move to select the module. We'll type run to run the module. And now it should start trying to inject a JavaScript file uh, when they visit a website. Now, what we're going to do here is go to a website that uses HTTP rather than HTTPS. So we're going to go ahead and navigate to this random website that doesn't have HTTPS now. Things are a little bit slow, but let's see if we scroll down a little bit. We now see that the web page is uh, vibrating uncontrollably. Now, if someone didn't know what was going on, they might think that their monitor was having issues or that their internet was out. In fact, they might never have seen anything like this before. So these are the kind of tactics we can use to intercept someone's connection and start messing with what they see. I'm going to go ahead and stop this command. And now that we've stopped the attack, we should be able to, in a new tab, load the web page without it shaking. All right, now this is what we would have seen if we weren't intercepting in the first place. OK, so we've successfully run our first module. We'll go ahead and type back and type help again. All right, let's move on to something a little bit more advanced. Now we're going to start manipulating traffic. And of course, I could just do a simple denial of service attack, but that's pretty easy to do. So instead, let's go ahead and replace. Uh, oh, no, let's do an image. So there is the ability to basically replace images that are being loaded on the page to whatever image that you want, which is pretty funny. So we're going to go ahead and use the replace module. I'm going to go to my file navigator, file manager. I'm going to go to the desktop. I'll just pick a nice image, drop it here, and then run. OK, so let's go ahead and switch over to our victim computer again. And we'll see if we're able to swap some images. Now, here on the screen, we can see two different websites that are using HTTP and not HTTPS. Let's go ahead and copy the URL into a new tab and see if we can load these when we are intercepting the traffic from our attacker computer and trying to basically put in an image where the website would normally be loading something. Now here we can see that the website has loaded, but the advertisement at the top is the image that we replaced. This will continue throughout the page, and this will look pretty ridiculous as these images load in. But in general, you can see that we're able to manipulate these things. And while some of these images are able to load correctly, other ones will not. Now. This will be the same with any web page that isn't loading their images securely. And in general, it would be more useful to maybe do some DNS spoofing. But this is pretty funny, honestly. And it's easy to start messing with people who are using insecure websites. So this is a pretty good example of why if you are using an insecure website on a shared network, anybody could start injecting things, uh, which would just start popping up your screen and generally confusing you. As you can see, the big headline here is uh, John Bolton as a walrus. All right, now here we've successfully loaded an insecure news website. And as we saw on the other news website, all of the top stories are about John Bolton being a walrus. Now, I don't read Armenian, or I can't speak it, but I can see that all these stories look pretty serious. So here you can see we could potentially influence someone by just presenting a bunch of thre threatening looking images all over every website they visit. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my attacker computer. OK, so we've seen the result of that module. I'm going to press Control C to stop. And then I can press back, back, and help again to, for the last time, look at all these wonderful modules to run. So here we've seen we can intercept traffic, we can modify traffic, we can do all sorts of cool men in the middle attacks. And of course, if we want to do some just general stuff, we can also type sniff. Now I'll type run. And I can also attempt to load SSL strip, which will attempt to downgrade traffic and hopefully be able to pick up some more uh, interesting information we might lose otherwise. So we'll attempt to load that too. 
And now, as you can see, we are running and we're saving packets in real time. And we'll be able to go back through later and also take a look at this information if we're interested. On my victim computer, I'm going to just navigate to a couple things and see if I can get an idea for what it is. All right, I can see I went to GoDaddy and that was, I could immediately see that was the website I navigated to. Let's go to, I can see I just went to cats.info. And whoa, I'm intercepting all this great stuff from Google.com. Now, if I wanted to do maybe some images that were coming up as well and see what exactly was, wow, there's a lot of really weird stuff on Google.com. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut down Google.com. Uh, but as you can see here, it's really easy for me to get started seeing exactly what someone is doing on a network using Zerosploit. And I can even save the logs here. So I've removed the logs, but in this case, I'm gonna go back. I'll type help one more time. And this is just so much fun. Let's go ahead and just type driftnet. So I'll type run, and we should be able to see any images that are captured. I'm going to reload Google.com. I'm going to maybe go somewhere else. I just went to clowns.info. All right, so uh, I've got I've got some different websites I've gone to now. I'm going to press, uh, let's see. It looks like we can now see any images we have captured in slash opt slash dot slash xe driftnet. Let's see if we've actually captured anything. So I'm going to go to CD, that folder it just mentioned. Oops, I'll start from the root folder, CD to get there. CD, this folder, LS. Did we capture anything? No. All right, well, that's fine. But if we do capture anything, then we should be able to retrieve all that stuff here. And as you've seen, we're able to do a lot of really interesting stuff with this tool. If you want to learn more about it, then you can check it out and run it on top of BetterCap. But again, you'll need to make sure that BetterCap is installed on your system and running well, because this all kind of rides on top of it and automates its top level functions. Zerosploit is a vivid example of why you need to be careful of connecting to an unknown network. While a VPN will protect you in a lot of cases, there are still ways your traffic can be manipulated, so make sure you're taking as many precautions as possible, and of course using a VPN, anytime you're not sure of the network that you're on. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and if you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. If you have any ideas for upcoming episodes, send me a message on Twitter, at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.